Good morning, brothers and sisters. I'm smiling, but you can't tell. But I am smiling because it's wonderful to be with you uh, on this lovely morning. We, uh, I am joined this morning. Uh, my, my guest host today is Rachel Black, who heads up a lot of our outreach ministries here at the parish. And we're going to have a conversation in just a moment about that. But I just want to kind of give you a sense as to what's happening here. Because of social distancing, we are really trying to make sure everything is as safe as possible. So rather than the two of us on camera together, we're going to move the camera. She is sitting way far away from me, so you don't have to have any worries about that type of stuff. I'm going to move the camera over so that you get to see her and, and listen to what she has to say. And I'll just be that sort of disembodied voice in the back asking the questions. Okay, stick with me for just a moment, my friends. Good morning, Miss Rachel. Good morning, Father. It's good to be here and to see all of you out there. So, Rachel, you have been really involved, uh, well, in a whole host of things here at Epiphany. You serve on our vestry. Um, you are really one of the driving forces behind some of our outreach ministries, and especially one that I know is near and dear to your heart as it is to mine, and that is Family Promise. Family mm -hmm. Promise... Uh, for those who, well, for those who don't know about Family Promise, why don't you give us like a 30-second intro to what that is? Okay, well, elevator speech about Family Promise. Um, they uh, vet local families who are in transition um, because they've lost a job or they've got other financial uh, issues that they're facing, and they're temporarily homeless. And so Family Promise has built a network of faith communities here locally that they work with to assist these families through their transition. Family Promise provides job uh, search assistance and uh, financial assistance and, co and coaching and, and uh, uh, help in the, uh, in the whole up upheaval associated with that kind of difficult time for a family. So that's okay. what they do on a, year, on a continuing basis. Excellent. Thank you for that. And I know that we have participated for years now with them, and we used to host families here in our church. They would stay here. We would prepare meals for them. They would, they would live on the campus. Um, we haven't done that this year, and I th I'm wondering if COVID has changed the way Family Promise is working. Could you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, uh, COVID has totally upended their uh, usual way of operation. So what they've done is they have now set themselves up so that the families that they have vetted uh, are staying at uh, hotel rooms or transitional housing in apartments. And Family Promise is still working with them, counseling them, assisting them in getting back on their feet financially and getting back into independence. So that's what they've been doing. Okay, so we don't really have an opportunity to work with them anymore. Well, maybe I guess there's a better question. Do we have an opportunity to continue to work with Family Promise? And if we do, what might that look like? Okay, there are a number of ways that we can assist, but the most, um, the most current way that we've, I've been approached by Family Promise concerning is uh, for, the, for the Christmas holiday, they would like to have member churches uh, adopt a family. Oh, I love that, adopt a family. What, what would that look like? What, how does that work? Okay, so Family Promise would send us uh, a, uh, a profile of a family, which I have applied for and I'm waiting for that profile. And it would talk about who the family members are, how many children, the ages of the children, and it would also have a wish list of uh, what their biggest needs are and Christmas gift list and uh, what would be appropriate to consider. And what, their, what Family Promise is hoping is that we as a parish would be able to assemble the, uh, the gifts and the stocking stuffers and the gift cards for a uh, wonderful holiday meal to help make that family feel that their holiday is a bright and happy one. 
Oh, I love that. So we'll have the ability to help in a number of ways. We can, we'll know that there are, are children and adults that we can do a little shopping for, right. and that would be great. Um, although, if uh, folks are not comfortable going out shopping, and I certainly can understand that, it sounds like we have the ability to donate gift cards, or perhaps even just write a check. Would that be appropriate? Yes. Um, if I'm hoping to be the focal point for this effort. So if you, as members of the parish, want to uh, write a check for Family Promise, you write it to us, Epiphany, that you put on the signature, on the uh, line at the bottom, Family Promise, and send it to us, we can do the shopping for you. And uh, what we need is to have all of the gifts and uh, gift cards and stocking stuffer uh, items in our hands by December 18th. And we will do all of the wrapping here at the church. I have, uh, I, I have a couple of folks who will help me do the wrapping and preparation. And we will deliver all of that to the Family Promise Office on December 18th, or a little bit before, if that's all. Before is better, yeah. Before is definitely better. We'll, we'll, make it, we'll make it a little bit before that. So that's great. It sounds like you've got a, a team of elves ready to help take care of this, whether Absolutely. they're going to do personal shopping or wrapping the gifts. Right. So we're making this as easy as we can on the Epiphanites. Absolutely. They can, uh, so how, you don't have the information for the family yet, but no, we're going to get yet. that soon. Yes. I guess maybe one of the things we could do is think, how do we get that information out to people? Well, I'm hoping that as soon as I have the information, we can post it on the Epiphany website. Okay. And we can uh, make an announcement. Uh, I, one of the daily messages are at uh, church during coffee hour that it's available to look at and please do uh, decide what you can help with and um, get the ball rolling as early as we can. Okay. Because I definitely would like to be able to uh, get to the Family off, uh, Promise Office the uh, holiday for our family uh, before the 18th of December. Okay, so we know that we're going to have more information to follow and we will find a number of ways to get that out in people's hands. Right. So we don't want people to start shopping right this minute, but if people do feel called to do something, uh, cash is king. If you want to write a check and send it to us right now, we'd be more than happy to take that, and you that bet. will help these families. You bet. Wonderful. We'll, we'll have a, a little account that we'll have, and we'll use that as our shopping account when we know what uh, is on the wish list for, for the holiday from the family. Excellent. Oh, I'm so glad that we're going to have an opportunity to continue to work with Family Promise in a, in a whole new way and still make these folks right. uh, have a great Christmas. I want you to feel free to get in touch with me by email, by text, by phone, and I will uh, keep you aware of what's going on, and I will do everything I can to make it as easy as possible for you to participate in this. It's a wonderful way to give to a local family that really is needy and wants to get back on their feet in a very positive way. Absolutely. I know in yesterday's message we talked about our vision statement, Seek God, Live Christ, Share the Spirit. I can't think of a better way to share the spirit Absolutely. than to help out these folks at Family Promise. Thank you, Rachel. That was wonderful. Thank you. I appreciate you doing that. Okay. I'm going to put it back over here onto me and get really far away so that we are safe and socially distanced. Um, I do want to take just a moment and give you an update. Uh, I know on Sunday I let folks know that uh, Father Vince had been hospitalized and he does, in fact, have covid uh, the good news is I spoke with him um, just last night, and he has been released. He's still recuperating at home, and he's got, uh, he's got a long road ahead of him, but he's very happy to be out of the hospital, and he wanted me to let you know that he, he so appreciates the prayers. He feels them, and I'm going to encourage you to keep them up. Keep them up for him. Uh, now, I know a lot of you are going to want to reach out to him, and nothing would make him happier, but let me also say that Phone calls right now are probably not the best thing for him because he's having a hard time with breathing. So if you want to let him know how much you care, send a card. Get, get him something in the, in the mail, just a short note to let him know that you're thinking of him. Boy, that would brighten his day so much. Uh, let's close in prayer for 
for our friend Vince and for all who have COVID. Holy God, we know that with you all things are possible and we have such faith that an end is in sight for this virus. Be with us, walk with us. Holy Spirit, come upon those who, who have this disease, those who are impacted by it, those who are caring for others who have it. Wrap them and all of us in your loving embrace and give us the strength we need to get from this point to the next side. May God bless you. May God love you. Know that we love you. We'll see you tomorrow.